Hi, my name is Alexander Mansouri. I'm a first year graduate student at Boston University majoring in trombone performance. I'm a dual processor cochlear implant user. Entering my fifth year in academic music study, especially at a university level, I've had to employ different techniques and to get through different challenges that cochlear implant uh, users face, especially in a musical realm. Uh, the following video is uh, an expansion of my first video. Any questions can maybe be found in that first video or by emailing me at alecmansouri, A-L-E-K-M-A-N-S-O-U-R-I, at gmail.com. Thank you. The first selection I played, Barnacle Bill the Sailor for solo bass trombone and piano, starts on a low C. The process of practicing this low C is, is both hours and a, a mental process. The biggest mental process that musicians use is audiation. Audiation, and the reason I bring it up in this video, is incredibly important for the rehabilitation of deaf patients. In this case, I've been repeating this note over and over and over. This, this gives me a clearer idea of what the pitch is, and if we think of the pitch as a dartboard, I started out by hitting the ends, and now I'm hitting the center much more frequently doesn't mean that I hit the center all the time, doesn't mean that I hear the correct thing all the time, but this translates to pitches in uh, the, the speech of humans. When I, when I listen to people who have uh, lower frequencies, it's things that are, that are lower in, in that sort of range of the piano, it's, it's clearer to pick up because that is the, the range that I play on my instrument all the time. And so I'm much more familiar with this and I can pick up the articulations that come from it. If we imagine uh, on, on another tangent, if we imagine um, the word ta, a, a cochlear implant patient, as, as we've seen from studies, hears the percussive sound of the t. So we can, we can hear that a word is started, but the problem is the resonance, the ah, the ah. And so, so we spend a lot of time trying to become familiar with the ah. And once we become familiar with the sound of the word, we can hear the beginning and then the sound. And now we can understand what somebody is, is saying to us. So I propose audiation on instruments, singing, being prescribed a certain amount of musical practice or listening when a cochlear implant patient is being implanted in the first stages is, is sort of my call to action. It's, I think that practice listening is incredibly important in those combinations. While I appreciate the hard work that all of the researchers and developers have done uh, and the time that has been spent in this product, uh, my concern over wind noise has grown and, and has actually become quite quite a, a problem in my gigging life, especially marching bands. Um, especially at a, at a PA system, at, at a, a big event, you'll, you'll hear somebody speaking on a microphone and all you'll hear is <sighs> and you'll hear the feedback of the wind inside the microphone. And essentially, that is what a cochlear implant user hears all the time. Uh, I don't know if the average user can tell that the the current um, wind guards that are that can be used or the cloth that can be put in place is actually uh, pitch dampening and in some ways pitch changing. I've noticed that sometimes I I can't I can't even play uh, in a parade because I I can't match with my slide and I end up having to take off the the sometimes already drenched cloth from from the sweat on a hot day, which traps inside of the hearing aid, and that's another problem entirely but I take off the cloth and then I can hear the pitches correctly. So I've already had a problem hearing the correct pitches and I put on something that's supposed to help and it, it's a little frustrating uh, over time. My idea for a, and, I, and I'm not sure if this is already in development so I apologize if it is, but my idea is essentially to put a small dead cat like you would put over a microphone that, that a reporter would use, a small circular dead cat that, that could be sort of slid on and off maybe even some type of, of cotton that, that could be around it to prevent from sweat going inside. And uh, that, that, that paired along with uh, rubber that could go along the bottom that could prevent the, the uh, implant from slipping or moving with the added uh, cotton. The rubber would also help 
for a, a problem that I've only recently noticed, which is uh, vibrato when I jump or move, when I move my head, um, the average listener, uh, their, their ears, the, the balance that comes from their, their hearing and, and the, uh, the general um, placement of their ears is, is beneficial in a, in a sense that they don't get uh, feedback from the physical sensation of the implant jumping on their head. I feel my implant jumping on my head when I move my head, when I go up and down in a parade sense. Sometimes when I try to do avant-garde poses or I try to do something in, during a performance, I can feel it moving and that, that takes away from my experience. Um, as much as it's not the, the everyday implant user, uh, we're, we're trying to conquer these challenges and, and have a world that people can do whatever they want with these, with these things rather than feeling uh, confined by the problems that they have. I appreciate your time. Thank you for all of your work and the support that uh, this community has. Uh, I look forward to being a part of this community and I look forward to, to giving more time and, and more effort uh, to developing solutions to the challenges we all face. Thank you.